Let's establish some trends about the stability of charge among the p-block elements, as this is going to help us understand structure and reactivity throughout the entire semester. Charge stability depends on two factors. One is the size of the element, and you can see from the chart that's shown here, as we travel across the periodic table from carbene to fluorine, the size decreases, but really only by a relatively small degree. As we travel down the periodic table from fluorine to iodide, the size of the atom increases, and it increases fairly substantially. Recall that electronegativity increases as we travel across the periodic table, and electronegativity increases as we travel up the periodic table. That makes fluorine the most electronegative of all of the elements, and certainly among the p-block elements, it's clear that fluorine is substantially more electronegative than the others. Let's begin to establish some trends about the stability of charge among the p-block elements. Let's begin with negative charge. As we travel across the periodic table, these elements have an increasing ability to stabilize negative charge because of electronegativity. As we travel down the periodic table, these elements also have an increasing ability to stabilize negative charge, not because of electronegativity, because electronegativity runs in the opposite direction, but because of their size. The larger size is able to spread that electron, that extra electron, out in a larger, over a larger region of space, and that contributes to an increasing stability with increasing size. We can use these trends in order to explain the basicity of the anion shown here. In each case, an element in the second row carries the negative charge, and so going from carbon to fluorine, stability of that negative charge will increase. Having the most stable anion means that it has the lowest affinity for a proton, making it the weakest base. Fluorine is the weakest base. The carbon anion is the strongest base. For positive charge, stability trends run just the opposite they do for the anions. Traveling across the periodic table from fluorine to nitrogen, stability increases up to the point where we get to carbon. We're going to learn that there's something very special about the structure of positively charged carbon that breaks this trend. Traveling up the periodic table from iodonium to fluoronium cation, stability increases, and this runs counter to electronegativity. So we need to invoke size in order to understand the behavior of this particular trend. In the case of the small fluoronium ion, and also in the case of the much larger iodonium cation, both have one extra positive charge, one extra proton at their core compared to the number of electrons in the electron cloud. But in the case of the iodonium cation, that cloud is held much further away from that positively charged core, and so that those electrons are ineffective at stabilizing the surplus of positive charge that exists there. These trends can again be used to explain chemical behavior, such as the acidity of the ammonium cation compared to the hydronium cation. In the case of ammonia, we have a positively charged nitrogen that's more stable than the positively charged oxygen. Being more stable means that that ammonium cation will hold on to its proton more tightly. It's less willing or less interested in giving up that proton compared to the hydronium ion. That makes the ammonium cation a weaker acid compared to the hydronium ion. Throughout the semester, we're going to be using these trends in much the way I've illustrated for you here, and they're going to be a very uh, powerful approach to understand the structure and reactivity of charged organic molecules.